Hi there, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to validate their skills building or extending out the power building on top of or extending out the power platform. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at business process flows. Now these are a great tool that you can turn to if you wanted to very sort of accurately mirror out your internal processes within a model driven app experience. If you've worked previously with either, the, either Dynamics 365 sales or service or indeed Dynamics CRM, the old on-premise product, these may feel very familiar to you, uh, but we're just going to assume no previous knowledge as part of this video. I'm just going to take you through and show you how to build out a very simple uh, business process flow targeting a, uh, a single table in Microsoft Dataverse. So to begin, we're going to want to go to solutions down here. We're going to go into the PL400 demo solution. Uh, and at this point, uh, because we can't do it yet with the new uh, maker portal interface just yet, we're going to click the button up here to go to switch to classic. This is going to take us to the old sort of solution explorer. And from here, we'll be able to set up and start working with our particular uh, business process flow. So just give that a second to load. Then we're going to want to select from the left hand list over here uh, processes and then click on new at the top up here. And then in the, we're going to get a sort of uh, a dialogue up here that's going to give us a few options to select. So we'll just give that a second to load. Okay, so we're just going to call this our account uh, validation process. We're going to select business process flow from the list down there. We're going to select account. Um, we're happy with the name down there. Um, we want to make sure that we've got uh, the first option selected. Uh, task flows are actually deprecated now, so we don't really want to be using those for new projects. And indeed, they're not something that you need to worry about from the PL400 exam standpoint. So let's just click on OK at this point. And it's going to load us up the sort of uh, the business process flow designer window. And we can see that we've got the ability on here to add on various different components to our flow um, by using the sort of the toolbox that we've got over here. So we can add on various different stages. We can have conditions that are met. Uh, we can set up data steps, workflows, so we can call specific workflows, action steps. And in preview, we've got the option of being able to call flows as well from our business process flow. So we're just going to add on a couple of stages onto here. So we're just going to have, let's say, three stages in our particular um, process over here. I'm going to start to populate these with the appropriate steps. So I'm just going to call this our um, sort of suspect stage at this point. Um, so we'll just, uh, we'll actually, we'll call this, we'll marry this to the, to the various uh, categories down there. So we'll just call that our qualify stage down there. Click, we want to make sure that we click on apply to make sure the changes are saved. Otherwise, uh, we may have uh, data being lost. Then at this point, we just want to make sure that we've got our account name uh, field sort of populated. Um, and that we've also given a account rating as well. And I've just realized I didn't click apply on the previous step, so I've just lost my changes, um, as you can see. So let's just do that again. Uh, we're just going to make this a required step as well. Click on apply. And then we just we just then need to just build out the various different stages of our particular uh, process flow. So I'm not going to do anything too complicated on here. Um, we're just going to uh, add on maybe just one or two different uh, data steps on here. So in this one, we'll maybe add on three. We're not going to worry about triggering any processes or anything like that. So in this case, we're just going to want to make sure that we've put in our address line one, street one, make sure that we've also got a, uh, a zip. Or, well, actually, no, we want town or city as well, probably. Where's it gone? It's a city. Just want to make sure at this point that we've got address all of the various different address data fields populated for our particular account. Click on apply down there. Then at the final stage, uh, we just want to maybe call this propose. Again, click on apply to make sure that we don't lose our changes. Uh, and then here we want to maybe populate some details regarding the uh, maybe the credit limit of our particular account maybe just add in a second data step over here and we will call this let's just say maybe industry as an example for that one so as we're working through as you, and you saw in the earlier step we can set particular data steps as being required we can adjust their sequence in the list um, so if we wanted things to appear in different orders, we can do. If we wanted to, we could maybe call particular workflows based on steps on here. So 
on a particular maybe um, trigger point. So when we enter a stage, when we exit it, we can then also we can call these workflows at any particular point. I'm just going to delete that away because we don't really want to um, um, set that up as part of our flow today. So just give that a moment just to just to load for us. Okay, apologies, had a bit of a crash there, so just had to recreate the, the uh, BPF from scratch. So at this point, I'm just going to hit on save in case um, uh, anything happens again. Um, just give that a moment to save. Um, so yeah, so we can actually add on workflow steps. So when certain things happen, we can trigger that off. We can also do the same with action steps. So again, if I click on that on there, we should get a, a similar process down there. We can sort of execute a process uh, when a particular step is reached within our um, within our particular um, stage. So again, I'm just going to remove that action step because I'm not going to work with that today. And then also flow steps as well, which again work on similar a similar basis at a particular step. We can call a flow, but we don't have a trigger action for that. It just executes. Um, we can just execute it when um, when we reach that particular stage. A good thing that you've also got with business process flows is conditional flow. So if you wanted to adjust um, how the flow sort of looks based on certain steps being reached, we can do that. Um, we're not going to worry too much about it in for today's video, but we could maybe say that okay, well let's if the uh, if the industry as an example equals a particular value, then we can adjust the steps that that occur for the particular user um, in either sort of direction. We can add on multiple rules to be able to sort of categorize that. Um, so quite some so basically you can use some quite powerful things potentially with just a single business process flow, which is really great. But again, we're not going to worry too much about that for today. We've got some useful function, functions at the top up here that we can use to do add, cut, copy, delete. Uh, snapshots actually really handy because what we can do is actually download a picture of our particular business process flow and we'll get something maybe a little bit similar to this. So from a documentation uh, standpoint, this can be a really handy tool. We can validate um, our particular business process flow, get a bit of a warning maybe if there's an error message or something like that. Uh, we can order our business process flow. So because we can have multiple ones of these set up within our particular um, Dataverse environment, we may want to control um, the appearance and whether or not users are sort of presented with a particular business process, process flow first of all, or whether the one that we're creating now sort of takes precedent over that. So the, the options on here let us sort of do that. Uh, we can see that we can just sort of adjust the order of that. Um, and but ultimately, this will be based on security role permissions as well which leads me very nicely onto the next option up here, uh, which lets us then define, okay, um, the specific groups of users in the application who we want to be able to see this business process flow. So certain teams, certain individuals may need to have other uh, process row, process sort of roles sort of shown to them. So in this case, maybe I just want to say, okay, maybe the PL from the security role and system administrator will be the roles that we want um, to, to sort of show for that, uh, for this particular business process flow. At this point, it's all looking pretty much good and ready to go. So I can just click on activate at the top up here. And this is gonna get our business process flow ready to go in the application. Um, now we also need to make sure that for, for users to see it, it needs to also be added into our model driven app that we've set up already. So once we've activated that, we're just gonna go back on and just validate that we've got the business process flow included in that. So give that a second just to save and activate. Okay, so that's all activated now. Um, I close the window down up here. We can see it's in our solution like so. I'm just gonna come out of the classic interface for now uh, and I'm just gonna go into the sample model-driven app that we've set up previously. Now I can see down here that um, because we've got all selected, all of the different um, business process flows that are set up in the system will appear. So if I was to now navigate onto my particular model-driven app, I'm just gonna hit Control F5 just to give it a bit of a refresh. If I was to go onto a new account record now, I should see my process flow loading at the top like so. So we can see all the field properties that we added onto there can be sort of populated and can be sort of worked with. Um, so maybe I could just put in maybe test as our account name on there, give that a save down there. Given some useful details in terms of okay, well, how long the process has been active for, you know, we can move to different stages of the process as long as we meet the various conditions on there. We can maybe get a preview of what we need to pop in. Um, and we've also got some additional options at the top up here. So if we wanted to, we can maybe switch to a different process. 
if one is available to us. Uh, we could also abandon it entirely as well, so maybe it might not be useful for our particular scenario, um, so we just sort of get rid of it entirely if we wanted to. So as you can see, fairly powerful, fairly easy to set up as well, uh, which makes them a really good candidate when you want to sort of map out your processes very sort of, um, you know, uh, granularly within the application. It gives you that flexibility to do that. Now, final thing just to bring to your attention uh, is that the the process that we set up also has a corresponding table that's sort of created for it. So if I was to go back into our uh, classic interface for a second, we can take a look at that table. We might need to add it into our solution first, but let's just give it, give it a moment just to confirm. So I go to accounts down there. So yeah, it's not added it in. So if I go to add existing, I should see I've got a table down here called account validation process, which I can select. So each business process flow will have a corresponding table set up for it. Um, now this table stores various different metadata properties about each instance of a process that's active in the system. Uh, in most cases, you won't really want to touch it or do anything with it. The only scenarios where maybe you might want to um, go a little bit deeper and start to work with it is if you wanted to, uh, as an example, interrogate some of the different properties and fields that are contained within that. So if we load it up, we can take a look and see in terms of what useful information bits we get. So we get, for example, okay, when it was started, uh, how long it's been active in a particular um, stage for its current state, you know, all of these properties down here. We could maybe also add on additional metadata that maybe we populate ourselves via a different process or a plugin or something like that, um, that maybe contains some additional useful metadata for our particular process stages. Again, it may be for specific scenarios, you need to do that sort of deep level, um, you know, um, you know, process session sort of management and storing of additional metadata and attributes and stuff like that. However, in most cases, you can probably just safely, um, you know, ignore the corresponding table that's set up with the business process flow. But it is worth highlighting that you've got that there and what you can do with that potentially uh, if you're so minded to. So that wraps it up for today. I hope it, this video has been useful in introducing you to business process flows and what they can do. Uh, please check out the other videos on the channel and in this series. We're covering a whole range of different topics across the sort of the PL400 exam spectrum. Um, you know, um, so I hope that um, you know they, they're a useful tool as part of your vision as part of preparing for the exam. Uh, so what it leads me now to say is thanks for watching and have a great day. Cheers.